really good article in The Athletic about the Warriors offseason. And as my mind always, always works whenever I see something like that, it's sort of like threefold. There's the media industry stuff where I'm just like, okay, is this a, is this a well-written article? Did I, did, did I enjoy reading it? Okay, there's that. Second part, what's in it? What's the meat in here? And then the third part, which is a little bit more abstract, is why is this public? So my mind always goes there because as much as everybody over with the Warriors loves <clears throat> the slates, somebody is telling him something that he can put in the athletic for a reason. Why would the Warriors want uh, 1,200 words on whether or not Jordan Poole is safe or if he's going to be traded why would they want the message out there, which was, just to sort of uh, sum it up for everybody, the message was um, the Warriors think that this is recoverable. However, that also means, that does not mean he's safe. Everybody not named Steph is possibly going to be traded this offseason. Why would they do that? Why do they want that out there? If you ask me, Dibs, it's because they want the NBA world to think they don't have to trade Jordan Poole. Of course. Because if they know that they have to trade him, that throws his value into the toilet. Right. And you don't want his value in the toilet if you are, in fact, going to trade him. And they also added in the piece in that article about them not being that concerned about being up around four or $450 million. They're not going to make a trade just to save money right. under the, the cap and the luxury tax and all the rest of it, which even... I think furthers that point about them trying to get the narrative out there of we're not going to trade Jordan Poole just to save money or just because we've given up on him or just because he won't play nice with Draymond Green. We're not motivated to do any of those things necessarily. We're not going to be completely put in that box. And so all those narratives come out today on June 12th, as we sit now 10 days away from the NBA draft. Well, welcome in Twitch and YouTube and the chats that go along with it, the Comcast business text line, and we are always open for your phone calls at 888-957-9570. And we can go ahead and chop it up. Willard and Dibs, good afternoon. Hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. The whole message from the Warriors at every stage right now is everything's fine. Everything's fine. It. It doesn't really look like everything's fine. But think about it. Bob Myers is leaving. Well, we're fine. Right? Promote from within. And damn it, no matter what the rules are, we're going to win. We are going to win. And Bob, gosh, we love you. And all right, we'll see everybody uh, next week. That's the message. And that was the message of this article as well. Everything is fine here. We're not scrambling. We, we could just do it again. Or maybe we won't, but no matter what, like, we're fine. Just because our general manager left and because we lost in the second round and barely won in the first round and had infighting and we have financial issues that are skyrocketing out of control, we're fine here. The Warriors are very much like that famous GIF, or GIF, depending on the way you like to pronounce it, where uh, who's the character that's sitting there? And there's just fire surrounding inside the apartment. Everything is burning. And the character's looking at the screen going, everything's fine here. Everything is absolutely mm -hmm. fine. There's no problem at all. I don't think that the Warriors are burning by any stretch, but there's a lot going on. Yeah. And they would like us to believe that there's very little going on. And there is a lot going on. And the lot going on is the GM is gone. The president of basketball operations is gone. And your power forward might opt out. And your shooting guard, one of your splash brothers, is entering the final year of his deal, as is the head coach. And then your backup uh, point guard, your backup two guard, Jordan Poole, may or may not want to be a part of what goes on anymore, depending on if Draymond Green is there. He may want to be gone. And Jonathan Kaminga intimated at the end of the playoff run that maybe he wants more playing time or he wants to be elsewhere, but... Nothing to see here. Everything's fine. Yeah, I, and the article even linked the, the, the Draymond podcast and the comments that Steve Kerr made that we talked a lot about a week ago with regard to how the Miami Heat are, well, they're here because they don't have any bench players complaining. They don't have anybody yelling about playing time. Everybody's singularly focused on one goal. It linked it and said there's no doubt that these comments made their way back to Jordan Poole. 
So it's interesting. I like to me the more everybody says like everything's cool here, the more I re- feel like something significant is about to happen. That's I like I I can't tell you what, but I know that a lot of these things make us feel like, and I know Steiny was talking about this earlier, and he's not wrong. The idea of running it back being on the table. I don't really think it is. I I think if the Warriors get there, they're setting it up so that if it does happen, they don't have egg on their face. But if we get there where they're just running it back, I think it's because a lot of the things they tried to do, just they didn't end up getting them done. And running it back to you means everybody's back except for Dante DiVincenzo and J. Michael Green, players who can opt to go elsewhere. Steve Kerr has referred to the foundational six. It would mean to me that right, they are the still the, six. They okay. are the top six Steph, players. Steph, Clay, Dre, Kavon, Jordan, and Andrew. Correct. So if, if that to are, you is running it back. that's your starting lineup, and if the sixth one is the first man off the bench, yeah, you're running it back. And if you do run it back, in my opinion, you're not going to be an NBA championship team. You won't be an NBA Finalist, you won't be a Western Conference finalist, in my opinion. I don't think that that core is good enough to get you to where you want to get. Probably not, but it was 12 months ago. Right, in a flukish kind of year. And well, I heard a caller on Steine and Guru lay it out, and I, I don't think that they were wrong in terms of the way everything broke for you. You beat a Denver team that didn't have two of its best players, so you beat a broken Denver. You didn't have to face the best team in your conference because... They gagged it away against Dallas, so you Mm. beat a very deeply flawed Dallas, and Memphis lost its best player in in that series. John Morant did not finish the series, and you can tell me (sighs) that they're better without John Morant, but if you would ask anybody in the Warriors organization, you got to sacrifice GP2, but they're going to give up John Morant. Would you take it? The of answer is would. yes. Yeah, but I my my comeback on that comment is always that the Warriors were still ahead in the series when Ja was in it. They were up two one without him, right, or with him, and then they were they went two two to one without him. So I like I don't know. I I get a little my shoulders go up a little bit when we call years flukish because I maybe I, flukish is the wrong way to describe it, but things broke their way. In a, an extraordinary fashion. I think whoever wins the championship always feels that way. I feel like that is omnipresent. For Denver this year, it broke their way. It absolutely broke their wow, way. Wow, they were the best team in the conference. Well, but we felt that way about the Warriors 12 months ago. I guess but they I, were the three seed. Uh, understood. So it's different Understood, to me. But, but the favorite is not always the one seed. Denver doesn't have the best record in the NBA. How did it break Denver's way? Okay, how about this? Um, the two seed imploded, uh, right? Uh, the defending champions had infighting, and the teams with the best record in the NBA uh, both flopped on their home court and never made it to the NBA Finals, so an eight seed was waiting. Is that not breaking your way? I think in the NBA Finals, you could say that it broke their way because if you look at Boston, would have been a tougher opponent than Miami's been. Even Milwaukee would have been tougher. You could argue that Philadelphia would have been tougher. So that is the only way I think that it, quote, broke Denver's way. I mean, the uh, Phoenix Suns were actually the favorite to come out of the West at the start of the, uh, of the, uh, at the, start of the whole thing. Of the uh, season. Start of the playoffs. Start of the playoffs. Once More they, so than Denver? Yeah. Yeah, with Kevin Durant. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. They were the favorite. The Warriors were right there. Denver was in the mix, but they weren't the favorite to come out of the West. And the Suns didn't materialize. They didn't materialize, as they often seem to, to not. Um, and so, I don't know. I, like, I get what you're saying. I just feel like whenever a team wins a championship, like if, if, if a good player on one of the opponents getting hurt means that it broke your way, well, then it's broken their way every single time they've won. That's happened every time the Warriors have won. That somebody good on one of the other teams got hurt. You know what I mean? And and when the Warriors didn't win, it was it it was for the opposite reason. When Toronto won, did it break their way? Sure. I mean, yeah. like literally ligaments broke their way. Tendons too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't feel like next year is just a fait accompli that Denver is going to be impossible to beat, you know? Like they've got to they got to go on their journey, don't you think? Yes, they do. I mean, every team has to go on their journey, and every team, to your point, needs a little bit of luck. I just look at last year 
and we lean on the fact that the Warriors won the championship, I think that we are... I would caution people to look at that championship and say, yeah, that team is dominant, and they're just you know one restart away from doing it again. Things broke their way, and that's why they got their fourth championship.